So, um, so there is a vast literature that studies the effects of the minimum wage. Uh, it's, I guess, big, well, it, it's quite controversial. So the literature is actually quite split uh, between people who say that the minimum wage has essentially no effect on employment. So when you increase the minimum wage, it's not going to uh, affect employment or unemployment. And people who say that no, in fact, the minimum wage does have a detrimental effect on unemployment, on employment and uh, you know unemployment. Um, so, uh, so what do we make out of that? So, if if you think that the minimum, you know, if the if if the literature that's correct, if the papers that are actually turns out to be correct are the papers that say that the minimum wage has no effect on employment, then our model is uh, not consistent with that. Um, because in our model, it's very clear that if you increase the minimum wage, you're going to, well, at least in this very simple setup, in which um, everybody is paid at the minimum wage. Um, but let's say, you know, you, we focused on the part of the labor market that's paid at minimum wage. Okay, and we model that specifically. Our model would still say that if you increase the minimum wage, you're going to depress labor demand for these workers and you're going to reduce unemployment and you're going to increase unemployment for these workers. But there is a fraction of the literature that argues that no, in fact, the minimum wage has no um, effect on uh, unemployment and employment for the workers who are uh, targeted. So if, if that's correct, uh, you know, how how can we reconcile that with the model that we have? Uh, and in fact, it's not consistent. You know, the model is not consistent. Uh, is not consistent with that evidence. So, if that evidence uh, turns out to be the correct one, you will need to make you know you will need to make adjustment to the model to be able to account for that finding that the minimum wage has no effect on employment and uh, unemployment. And so, how could you how could we do that? What are possible options? Um, so basically, we would need to introduce elements in the model that make the minimum wage less detrimental to employment, you know, and unemployment. And um, so, what are options? Uh, well, one thing that that may be going on goes back to the efficiency wage theory that we talked about, where we introduce wage functions. So it's possible that if you pay people more, you know, by raising the minimum wage, people will be more devoted to their work, uh, which will increase their productivity. And that increase in productivity could balance the increase in wage so that, in fact, profitability is not affected for firms. You know, that could be, uh, that could be one option. Or, kind of a variant of the efficiency wage theory, it's possible that when you increase wages, the living conditions of these workers goes up, and that's, that's pretty obvious. And, you know, having better working conditions, maybe they'll be able to be more productive, you know, maybe they don't need to take, say, two jobs, they can focus on their current job, maybe they can get, you know, help, you know, in, well, you know, like simple things, you know, maybe they can get uh, a nanny to look after, um, say, if they have children, um, and that gives them time, you know, to devote to their work, <coughs> um, or, or other things, you know, maybe, they can be more focused on their work because they can have help at home. Um, there are many things that can be going on that if you give better living conditions to people, they end up being more productive. Uh, they end up being more productive at work. Um, so that would be one option. If this efficiency wedge uh, was actually uh, present, and you know, it's it's quite possible for the um, share of the labor market that's at the minimum wage and. You know, in fact, um, the model could, you know, explain why an, an increase in minimum wage may not be uh, may not be so costly. Uh, but but that would require to modify that basic version of the model and introduce that efficient eff efficiency wage um, component. You know, so you need to completely, you know, revamp your model to accommodate that finding. Um, another possibility, which is a bit further afield. Uh, but that you sometimes read about is that maybe there is some um, aggregate demand effect. So the idea is that people who are um, working at minimum wage are usually, you know, minimum wage is the lowest 
possible ways you can get to this people are people who are poorer than the average person in the economy um, so if you increase their minimum wage you're going to increase their uh, disposable income and uh, you're going to increase their spending and people who are who tend to be poor they tend to save less of course because they need to use their income for uh, you know just for everyday needs and so they need to they tend to spend a good fraction of what they earn uh, so if you increase their disposable income you're going to boost spending and and that's going to um, you know boost sales for firm and that's going to therefore boost you know what we call aggregate demand the amount that people consume when you boost, boost that then indirectly you're going to also boost the labor demand because you know if firms sell more they'll also need to hire more workers so through that aggregate demand channel you could you know by raising the minimum wage uh, you know raise labor demand so that the effects actually uh, of increasing the minimum wage would be quite you know would be neutral on employment and unemployment okay so that would be one uh, that could these are two kind of Uh, modules that you could add to the model to be able to uh, explain why uh, the minimum wage doesn't have a big effect on employment and unemployment okay if that turns out to be the case if instead uh, what turns out to be the case that indeed an increasing minimum wage reduces employment increases unemployment as you know another good fraction of the literature find then our model captures exactly that our model explains why that's the case because when you increase Uh, the minimum wage will depress labor demand and you're going to reduce uh, unemployment you're going to reduce employment and increase unemployment okay uh, so empirical evidence let's summarize what we've just said so there are uh, the empirical literature is divided in two camps which is never good ideally you would want to convert to one kind of findings uh, this is a bit problematic uh, that you have such strong division given that all these people look at the same data uh, so one camp says uh, that the minimum wage reduces employment and increases unemployment uh, so this is completely consistent with our model okay, in our model indeed when you uh, increase the minimum wage you're going to depress labor demand and you're going to reduce employment and increase uh, unemployment okay so If this is correct actually the model doesn't need to be modified and the minimum wage operates exactly as we say and in which case you know you have some optimal level of minimum wage and if your unemployment rate is too high you want to cut the minimum wage if your unemployment rate is too low uh, you want to increase the minimum wage okay but there's another branch of the literature that says that uh, instead um, the minimum wage has no effect on employment or unemployment okay um, so this would not be uh, consistent with our model So if that turned out to be how the labor market operates, that's not consistent with our matching model. And uh, if that was the case, uh, we would need to modify the model, you know, to account for this type. You know, that's how science works. You know, you start by postulating, you observe the world, you postulate a model of the world, and you know, you try to build a model that describes what you've seen. And then um, your model also make uh, predictions about things that you haven't seen yet. And then uh, you know when people explore the world further and explore the predictions that you make. And then so here, for instance, our model would make predictions that the minimum wage reduces employment. 
you explore the real world, you look at the effects, if what comes is not what's predicted by the model, then you have what's, what Thomas Kuhn calls an anomaly. Once you have an anomaly, it means that you have an empirical fact that's not consistent with the theoretical property of the model. Then it means that you need to go back and iterate and improve your model, rework on new aspects of the model so that the new version actually captures the whole body of fact that we know. Okay? Uh, so if indeed it's confirmed that the minimum wage has no effect on employment or on unemployment, this wouldn't be consistent with our model. So we would need to uh, we need to modify in fact improve the model to explain this. You know, if confirmed. And as I said, there are two uh, there are two ways that you can do it. Um, basically, there are two ways in which increasing the minimum wage is actually uh, as this you know positive properties on employment that could balance out the negative properties of the minimum wage. You know, the fact that a higher minimum wage means a higher labor cost. Um, so what we need to do is. We need to introduce new elements such that the minimum wage does not depress labor demand. 